In this video, it's time to improve the Skoda Favorite. So I've just been to see my local garage and um, the, I, I found out what the slight knocking is at the front. Unfortunately, it looks like it's steering rack. Just hear it there. Or maybe you can't. I don't know how good the microphone is on this camera. I haven't got my external plugged in. But um, their advice is just to let it develop. They've gone around the ball joints. It looks like it's had new lower arms at some point. Um, so they're okay. They've checked the ball joints. So it doesn't look like anything's going to fail. It's just is that just a bit of a rattle in the rack. So the MOT is March. So I think we'll just push on for a bit. And um, yeah, consider that a rack's going to be needed at some point. That does rather push the mileage guesswork out because you wouldn't expect a steering rack to fail on a car that had only done 20 or 30 thousand miles. Uh, so maybe it's more like 60 or 70. We just have absolutely no way of knowing. But the underside of the car, I uh, only took a couple of quick pictures, looks very sound. So that's certainly good news. Oh, this is a very big hill. But um, also done a bit of um, investigative work around the um, temperature gauge and um, trying to decipher whether it's telling the truth or not. And you can see that in this bit. So in conclusion, the, the bottom hose is very cold. Top hose is... Oh, that, that's not particularly warm. The other side of the thermostat housing, the hose is close to what it should be. I think the fact that we're getting mayo under the oil filler cap is because um, this engine isn't actually getting up to temperature and the um, temperature sender is just giving completely duff information. If I completely disconnect it, what does that do to the gauge? Ah, there we go. Maybe I'll just disconnect the temperature gauge and not worry about it. No, that's not really a good solution, is it? But, yeah, either the gauge or the sender is out of spec and giving duff information. Oh yeah, that's now getting really hot. Now we're not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, either that's... Um, well, I, I think that's stuff. I think the thermostat is stuff. Uh, so I think, it, apart from overheating, it's actually running too cool. So yeah, so worry ye not, it's definitely not overheating. Um, I still haven't yet got the fan to cut in automatically, but the problem is it's winter and it's quite cold. And even with a car just sitting there ticking over, it's not really getting all that hot. Which is one of the things that makes me suspect that maybe thermostat is stuck slightly open and isn't closing fully so um, yeah might explain why I mean the heater can be fierce but it isn't consistently fierce anyway that was just a quick favorite update um, thank you for your interest in this car it's been um, watching the views is just remarkable and lots of comments as well which have notably turned friendlier towards the old favorite so thank you very much uh, if you dropped a line in the comments, I do appreciate it. I try and keep up with the comments. That is getting more and more difficult these days. I uh, posted a video on the fabric yesterday, um, yesterday evening, and so far it's had um, almost 500, woo, 500 comments. So, um, yeah, it's um, proving a challenge. This is one reason I'm giving the magazine up, because I like the interaction. I like being able to talk to you, and then you talk back to me. Someone who's worked in magazine publishing for um, 11 years now, um, you don't get that. You might get someone coming to a show and they oh, we'll like the feature you did, but you don't get, you just don't get the instant interaction. And I love it. So thank you for everyone who comments. Thank you for the likes. Thank you also if you share my videos as well. Um, all, all helps build a wider audience. And um, yeah, the, the bigger the audience, the more videos I will make. It is that simple. Ooh. Bloody hell. <laughs> that was a bit exciting. Mud all over the road and then a huge puddle that I hit and it just sent a wall of water up into the air. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we've had some rain here in Wales, but I'm pleased to report it all seems dry in here. Although I'm slightly concerned that the rear window is very much struggling to um, demist at the moment. Uh, might have to check around the back just to make sure it hasn't got damp in the boot. If there's one complaint I do have about this car, it's the um, heated rear window. Um, there's a lot of moisture in this car, I think the boot seal is leaking, so there's quite a lot of water in the boot, I'm going to have to sort that out, living in Wales. But um, look how um, big the gap is at the bottom of that, um, of, of where the lines covers. Uh, it's, it's quite irritating is that, it upsets me mightily, you end up with that tiny little cleared window above it. And it's clearing as we speak, very slowly, battling the damp. But um, yeah, it's uh, not a great design that, you know, I quite like the way they're following the sweep of the wiper, but um, that hump is too big. It is not good. So there's water here. Um, I don't know if it's getting past the seal somewhere and the seal's not in great nick, or if it's leaking through the rustier parts of the tailgate. It is a bit rusty on both corners. Um, as you can see there, but um, the end result is moisture inside and moisture that has no way of escaping. So I've lifted the carpet up to try and improve its chances of drying out. Oh, that looks like one of my wheel nut covers. Yeah, great, great design these wheel nut covers, they obviously fly off quite often, most of them are missing. But still, that's one back in place. Uh, got a handle there. I'm not quite sure where that's meant to fit. It was just resting in here. Um, random other bits of plastic lining about as well. No, that's not rust. That's just um, damp carpet. But, you know, look, look at the spare wheel well under here. It's all immaculate. Um, again, they're a bit damp. The damp is making it in there. So I might even leave that up and perhaps take the parcel shelf out so it stands a better chance of drying out. So one major improvement is I've managed to get rid of the sticker residue so that when I mop this car um, I can then put the badges back on because you know without the estate badge how are people going to know it's an estate? This is a problem. And so now I'm going to set about trying to get the odometer working and uh, the first stage is to try and find out what's gone wrong. There's a little plastic cog, slips out of alignment. I think that's probably the issue. It has clocked up some miles. Um, so the question is, how much dashboard can I remove with just this screwdriver? Uh, let's jump in and take a look. So if we look at the mileage, it's up to 8727 now. So it's managed to clock up about another seven, or, or, no, it's clocked up eight miles since um, I picked it up. So that suggests it is actually sort of working. Um, it's, that cog is just catching enough to start everything turning. Um, so I think stage one, I can see a screw there, I can see a screw there. So we'll take these side pods off and um, see what we find. So that goes in there. There we go, handy little pot for keeping the screws down there. Is that now free? Oh, something's still holding that. Is that something down there? Oh, there we go. Hmm, interesting times. Aha! Right. Oh yes, I can see a screw down there now. Um, so, oh gosh, look at all this. Relays and all sorts in here. Right, uh, I think I might need both hands, but yeah, I'm now accessing screws because I think I have to take all of this off to get at the binnacle. So um, we'll now take this one off as well. any of this ever go back together again? That's the question. Oh come on, there can't be much in there. There's only one switch. 
Oh, there we go. Right, so that's that out of the way, and there's a screw down there as well. Although, does that just lift out? It does. By the look of it. Or it almost just lifts out. There we go. Right. Well, I think we'll do those two next and see where we end up. I, I might come back once I've actually got this out because this is getting a bit messy. Well, it really is just a case of a few screws and um, away it comes. And, um, oh, I'm going to have to unplug my power. Now we see if we can get in. And um, is it just me or does that tape not seem entirely factory? Has someone been in here before, do you think? Well, as you can see, it's a mechanical speedo, so the problem is in here somewhere. So, um, this is about the time I think I should have bought some new bulbs, because I think that one's dead. Um, maybe I can find some in my garage. Uh, right. Further dismantling could be done in the house, and I think it might be warmer there. Let's go for that option. Right, um, working space slightly at a premium. Um, I've got flat plans, that's the upcoming Retro Japanese magazine, that's Classic Jaguar, my last Classic Jaguar. That's the flat plans that we use to plan out the issues. Um, that's international postage cutoff dates, wires variously, um, because this is where I do all of my work, all of my video editing, and all of my packaging increasingly. That's why we have boxes all over the house. Um, busy, busy times indeed. This one is going to um, Germany, in fact. So, um, yeah, still got some calendars left, um, new recycled envelopes, uh, the mug boxes. If you buy a mug, we have to use these fantastic boxes which fold up to encase your mug. And the mugs are sitting up there with our slightly leaky chimney. Right, um, back to the matter in question. How does this come apart? I mean, there's all these screws. So I think I'm going to make a start. I'm getting no one done. No, it seems you don't go in from the back, you go in from the front. And um, oh, I need to look up and misalign my temperature gauge now. That should be flush. Or flushish. Oh dear. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort that out. But um, I think the next thing to do is get in here. And. Um, I wonder if those two will gain us access. I might have to take the big nut off the back, um, which holds, I think that's probably holding the speedo drive in, so might need a big spanner. So many little bulbs. I wonder how many are dead. Right, we have the unit out. It was indeed held by the big nut. So that shaft should turn to turn that gear, which then acts on the millimeter. And, um, yeah, I don't, something inside that must be broken because that isn't happening. Um, I think we might have to see if we can dismantle this a bit more. How very interesting. Well, now things are getting really interesting. I've dismantled it to this degree, so we've got the odometer out. And if I turn this gear, nothing happens. But if I pull that gear very slightly that way, then everything works. So the problem is that if that's there, which it seems to be where it's happiest, oh, it is working there. It seems a bit inconsistent. Look at that, I'm clocking my car. Hmm. I need to try and find out what's going on inside here. I'm tempted to try and take that row apart. And, um, See if we can find out what's going on. Right, got it all in pieces, all the number of reels that are out. And I think I found the problem. I think it is this shaft, and I think it is the fact that this cog at the end can spin freely on the shaft. So what's happening is this is going round, but that isn't. So I'm getting no odometer drive. So you would have thought just a bit of super glue on that would do the job. Tricky bit being that you've got to thread that rod through all of these before you can insert it 
into this end cog. So, um, interesting times ahead. Oh, look at the focus. Complete lack of it. While I'm in here, look at the state of these faded needles. Um, not looking the best, but fortunately, Mrs. Hubnut had the great idea of colouring the needles in with felt tip pens. Look at that. Someone will find that one day and wonder what the hell it's about. Um, but yes, um, I've also been colouring in the needle for the main speedometer because you have to take the needle off to get into it to release the um, gubbins on the back because the gubbins on the back is attached oh, to the metery bit on the back. Let's take that off a moment. So what I've done is super glue this cog onto the shaft which I've dumped a load of grease on to try and stop the shaft sticking to the side of the unit. So now when I turn this cog, which I'm not going to do now because I've greased it, the numbers all tick around. So um, yeah, it seems like real progress. Um, I might be able to demonstrate it by spinning the cog itself just to prove it is all, yeah you see, you can see that cog turning. So normally that cog would be doing the turning. Oh, I think that's just broken as I'm demonstrating it. Bother! Okay, maybe it's all okay, actually. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to keep this going, to be honest. I might round it up to 100. There we go. That's not very in line, is it? There we go. I think we'll say that's good enough and put it back together. There we go then. Back together at 100 miles. Um, but I know lots of bulbs are missing, so I think I might go for a quick drive into town and see if I can get any replacements. Look how orange my needles are now. Magnificent. Right, we haven't been using Took a lot lately. She's not been all that happy about being neglected. Oh, well, she's showing signs of life today. That's good. Let's give the windscreen a clean because it was bloody mucky the last time I took her out. Many dem demistings to be done. Right. Now the problem is, it's a Sunday, and that limits my options. I've got the Skoda in pieces, I don't want to put the interior back without replacing the dust bulbs. So I had to buy some new bulbs from Halfords. £1.50 each. Good grief. Halfords, you should be ashamed of yourselves. I mean, look, that's nothing at all. So while I'm grateful they're open on a Sunday, I think that is taking the pee to a remarkable degree. Oh well, I have my bulbs, um, so we shall do a bit of food shopping and then go home. Quite easy to lose this car in a car park because it's smaller than absolutely everything. But here she is, and uh, we're loaded up with shopping, and now we can head home. That's not been a bad spot to stop for lunch, I don't think. Moody sunshine going on, we've got rows of colourful houses behind Took. We've got the harbour down there and the sea pounding in, not hitting the wall because the tide's out. Yeah, nice spot. Uh oh, I fear some weather is hitting. 
This is the downside of having a coastal stop for lunch. Uh, I think I'm going to run away to the hills. Oh boy, it's turning a bit wild here. Yeah, in Tokyo, it's been a while. I was kind of waiting for some nice weather, but she's sitting out in all weathers at the moment anyway, so I don't see what the point is in waiting. At least it's fairly mild, so they're not chucking any grit down at the moment. Or salt, rather. Proton Gen 2 coming through. There you go, Malaysia, that one's for you. Right, let's get home. Journey is an adventure in an Invercar. amounts of steering input. Right, we have survived the hoonery and the dashboard is back in. So um, let's just do a bit of a light check. Ah, oh, steering wheel. Let's try that again. I hate steering locks. Oh. Okay, um, we've got two lights on. I think we should have more than that. Where's the oil pressure light? Um, not to worry. Let's put some lights on. Um, oh, I can't put lights on because I haven't got the switches attached. Ah. Right, we've got that frame back in place. Um, let's put side lights on. There we go, side lights and um, headlights. Main beam light. Um, I haven't got the fog light wired up. Oh, I'm rubbish. Uh, heated rear window has its own light. Okay then. And uh, let's turn headlights off before we flatten the battery. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to see which dash lights are working at the moment, but I can certainly see some light in there, so that's good. Uh, I think I'll just have to see how that goes when it gets dark. No, I'm being an idiot. That's the oil pressure light, isn't it? Because if I start the engine um, in gear... Oh, now I have to reset the sodding immobiliser. This thing does my head in. If I start the engine... That's what I'm missing. I'm missing the handbrake light which did come on for a time, so um, that must be what this bulb is for. Yeah, so there we go, that's the handbrake light. That's all good, we've got left indicator, right indicator, hazards. We've already done that one. I think the time has come to put it back together and go for a test drive, really. Rev counter works, that's good. 
Um, I think we've got full illumination going on as well, but we shall see. Oh, I probably should clip the microphone somewhere actually useful. Right. Um, The one thing I am slightly worried about is I've taken the speedometer needle off to give me, um, well, to make it possible to take the whole thing apart. Now, is it back in the right place? That certainly feels about 30-ish. Look at that, two tenths, two tenths flying along now. Give you a slightly more interesting view, proper driver's eye view for the journey home. Which means I'm not going to be checking it with the sound nav at all, but I, re I reckon it's pretty bob on. Good times! I can reset my trip, I'm a happy boy. Just not on the move. Oh no, that's me. So there we go. Um, we, we have a working odometer. Look, I've covered four miles and it actually says four miles. Um, that is a novelty, so I'm very pleased with that. Right, um, lights off. And silence, resumes once again. Oh, just clip that. That's not fitting too well. I'll sort that out in a minute. But yeah, mm, that's the seat, not me. Um, yeah, that's um, some more progress. So something else fixed. That is gonna make a big difference. Um, I would like to get the temperature gauge working more accurately, or at least fit one to try and confirm whether it's um, as wrong as it looks or if everything's all right. Um, I would like to have a much better idea of what the coolant temperature is. Um, so that's still to be done. There's still the knocking on the front, but um, yeah, it's progress. It's good. And um, next week, this car is going to be going in for some rust proofing because um, it needs it. I want to keep this car nice. Uh, having looked underneath, it's lovely. I want to keep it that way. So that might well be the next update on Project Skoda. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.